Okay, so continuing now with the prayer. And I would like to review again what we did last week because you really can't review this enough to understand the importance of, of this. I don't know if I told you this last week. Maybe I did. Um, there was one Hasidic Rebbe that said that if a, if a person would merely say the blessing, the first blessing of the grace after meals with intention, meaning to say that he focused on the meeting and understood what it said, he would immediately be filled with tremendous faith and belief in God Almighty because he would understand and implant himself. Remember, the prayers are for us as much as they're for God, for us to acknowledge God's goodness and his bounty to us. But it's to remind us, here we are, we just finished a meal. And how do we know where the next meal is coming from? Right? So the answer is, you really don't know where the next meal is coming from. <clears throat> Let's understand what that means for a second. Let's say you're, you're, you're a farmer, right? So you have some bread and you have some wheat and stuff like that. You made you made flour. I'm sorry. Then you make bread from that, but you don't know if you, especially if you're a farmer, you know that today you went and got flour to the cellar and you made bread. But it could be by tomorrow morning there's going to be an infestation of insects in there. There could be mice in there. The whole thing could be destroyed. It could be moisture, mold, floods. There's so many things that could come along and just destroy what you have now and uh, you don't have it tomorrow. So as we've moved away from being involved in agriculture, we become less sensitized to that. We think that food comes and it somehow just kind of sprouts on a shelf in the store. And when the food um, sprouts on the shelf in the store, then you take the food off the shelf, you put it in your basket, and lo and behold, if you come back a few hours later, you know what? Some more more mayonnaise grew on the shelf. Some more, uh, I mean, whatever you want. You can have 10 types of mayonnaise. You can have more breads. Breads just grows on the shelf, right? And as far as we have experienced, especially as people have been blessed to live in the United States of America, we experience that um, the shelves are constantly sprouting food. And we don't really understand what goes into it. I think that... Um, I mean, people have done official estimates in this, but I, I want you go into like these massive stores, like you have safe shop rates and safe ways and these type of things. If you go in there, really look at it, what you see on the shelf, the whole thing, the whole store could be emptied in one day. It's not that much food there. I mean, to say there is, okay, how many, how many, how many cans of tuna fish are there? 50 cans times you know, let's say there's 10 types of tuna fish. So you have 500 cans of tuna fish, okay? That means if 50 people come in and each one buys 10 cans of tuna fish, there's no more tuna fish on the shelves. If 10 people come in and buy five, not that many cans of tuna fish because each, each case is 48 cans. So all you need is 10 people to buy a case each. So 10 cases of tuna, of tuna fish, and there's no more tuna fish in the shelves. Now, as it happens, they have, they, they calculate what their big shopping days are. They have people coming in constantly reshelving, stocking, especially at nighttime. That, usually there's a, a um, storage area that they have, like a, a part of the building is a storage area with shelving, and they have some pallets of tuna fish. And then there's a truck, there's already a truck on the way driving, and there's another truck that just left the, the port, and there's another truck that, there's another ship coming in with tuna fish that's been canned. And, okay, so there's a whole, what does they call supply chain. But let's just say that the truck could not get to, the next truck could not get there. So in the first 10 people that go shopping for tuna fish, there's no more tuna fish on the shelves. So how long is it gonna take for the pallets to go? I don't know how many cases of tuna fish are on a pallet, but you can go, you get a kind of a flavor of it at Costco. Costco, they actually put the storage in front of you and you could see how many cases of tomato sauce are there? Maybe 200 cases of tomato sauce between what's there and what's up there. Maybe, four, okay, 400 cases, right? But how many people are in, are in Costco on a daily basis? There's maybe a couple thousand people. So if the first 400 people will walk out with a case of tuna, uh, a case of tomato paste or tomato sauce, that's it, right? They don't even have 
in the Costco's that I've been at least they don't have so much a storage area in the back. Everything's on display and everything's being stored. So reality is that the the it's only by the grace of God that we have food on the table every meal. It's only by the grace of God Almighty that the crops grow. The um, wheat doesn't go moldy, that there's no drought. If you start taking into the factors and the factors and the factors that go into having good wheat, going into flour, turning into flour, grinding it and, and milling it, and then that it doesn't get destroyed while it's flour, that the, it's not, it doesn't have an insect infestation, it doesn't have mice coming, it doesn't have whatever the situation is going to be. And now that you have a loaf of bread in your bed, on your table, that is incredible. It's an incredible miracle. And it's just as much as a miracle with a lot of intervening steps when you have what we are modern supply chains. Or even more, there's more things that could go wrong. A truck could get a flat tire. Okay, so the truck got a flat tire. There's another truck coming behind it. You know, you bring in, switch over your goods. There's, we have many things going for us today, thank God, that make these kind of things seem very, very remote. But however, we have to remember that that's not something we should take for granted. We should be, we need to be appreciative. We need to be able to see that this food that we received right now is by the grace of God. That we feel satisfied is by the grace of God. So there's a story. Oh, so what I was going to say is that here we are, we just finished this meal. And the truth is, if you were to be honest with yourself, you would say, I don't know where my next meal is coming from. Right? Because maybe the store is going to be closed when I get there. Maybe the store is not going to have food. Maybe the, okay. Now I don't say, I'm not saying these maybes to make us panic. Because we're talking, we don't want to, we're not supposed to panic. But the reality is that we only have the next meal because of the grace of God Almighty that we even get to the next meal, that we live as living beings to the next meal is only by the grace of God Almighty. So now we go on page 90 and we can now take another look. I want to go again what we did last week because I want, to, I want us to reinforce this. We're saying a blessing over here. So now let's look at the reality. On one hand, I'm full of food. Okay? I'm full of food. I feel stuffed. On the other hand, I don't know where my next meal is coming from. So one hand, I'm feeling very grateful for this food that I have right now. On the other hand, when's, when's the next meal? What's happening next meal, right? So let's look what it says. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who in his goodness provides sustenance for the entire world with grace. Grace means, in a, in a, in a, like in a graceful way, with, with loving kindness, with mercy, he gives food to all flesh for his kindness is everlasting. Through his great goodness to us continuously, we do not lack food. And may we never lack food for the sake of his great name. So now I'm acknowledging that the food I just had is from God Almighty. And I'm already praying that I'm going to have the next meal. And may we never lack food. Why should we never lack food? For my sake, you know, it doesn't say may we never and may we never lack food because I don't like to be hungry. It says, may we never lack food for the sake of his great name, for God Almighty's name, meaning to say that what we want to do is bring glory to God's name. When someone is well fed and has food, that's a glorification of God's name. We're seeing the, the, the abundance that God provides. If a person's starving, that's is something that is is not an open revelation of God's name. It's not sanctifying God's name. It's a, it's an terrible situation. Now we could come up with all kinds of reasons and explanations, which could be true. It could be that someone is involved in trying to stop the food supply, and there could be a person did things that they shouldn't have done, and there could be all kinds of different explanations. But it doesn't take anything away from it. The real way to sanctify God's name is people living well and doing well. That is how we're supposed to sanctify God's name. So what we're asking for is that I should have my next meal to sanctify his name. Because the whole reason that we're in this world is to bring glory to God. We're bringing everything we're supposed to be doing is supposed to be bringing the knowledge of God into the world, bringing the glorification of God into the world, to bring acknowledgement of God into the world. 
right? So may we never lack food for the sake of his great name. For he, benevolent God, that's by definition God is benevolent, provides nourishment and sustenance for all, does good to all, and prepares food for all his creatures whom he has created. As it is said, you open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living being. This is from Psalms 145, verse 16. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living being. We have to be able to express to God Almighty what our desires are, what we want. We want to have good things, good food. We want to have good hot food. We want to have good, healthy food. We want to have food in abundance. We want to be able to have guests over. We want to be able to have people. We want to be able to have the things that we need in the world. We want to be able to have a quality home and beautiful things in the home and beautiful clothing for our family. Those are all good things to want and we should ask for them. And But God knows what we need and we need to tell God, you know what we need, please. You know, you're the one who created me and please, this is my desire. Uh, please, and God will satisfy it. So blessed are you, Lord, who provides food for all. You, God Almighty, the one who provided food for all. So now, we can now understand this blessing, why this Hasidic Rebbe said that if a person was to say this with intention, he would be full, filled with, with faith. Because he would see so clearly where his food came from, that who's orchestrating and bringing the food to the table every single minute and how it is that he's going to have food every meal, not just the next meal, but the meal after that, the meal after that, the meal after that, the meal after that. And this is where if we, each one of us keeps our thinking in this place and everyone keeps their thinking in that place, then we don't, don't have any food shortages. God Almighty provides enough for the entire world. It's only when people who have the shortage mentality, which is the fear that there's not enough or not going to be enough, and they start trying to disrupt things because they want to interfere with God's flow, that's where we get into problems. So we should merit to, I want to encourage everyone to Jew and non-Jew to say this blessing after the meal and to have this awareness and to thank God and also to inculcate in ourselves the... Um, the certainty that God Almighty is taking care of us, he's taking care of us on an individual basis, personally taking care of us, and we will merit that we, we will uh, never lack anything. We will never lack any food. Other people shouldn't lack any food. He's preparing everything we need, and he is satisfying the desire of every living thing. Blessed is God who provides food for all. That's what we need to be focused on, and, and that changes our day, changes how we uh, look at the world. It changes our ability to now be giving and helpful to other people because we know that God is providing everything we need and God willing we will see you all next week unless there's any questions we'll see you all next week actually even if there's questions but are there any questions before we conclude for the evening okay have a wonderful evening and we'll look forward to reconvening next week thank you everybody for participating <laughs>